here in Las Vegas for the NFL Draft with NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. Daniel, let's start. What do you think the Jets are going to do at 4-10? Well, they're going to have good options. You know, I, I think they're in a position now where you just got to sit and wait and see what happens. Um, you know, to me, the two names that, that seem obvious that jump out, if Sauce Gardner's there, it just makes too much sense. You know, I think that would be a, a legit possibility. He jumps in there. I think that changes that whole secondary. Um, you know, just kind of, we talk about reshuffling the, the lineup. You know, your second corner becomes your third, your third becomes your fourth, and now all of a sudden you've got a strength. So that one makes a ton of sense to me. Uh, you know, Iki Aquano from NC State, if he's there, you can make that strong argument. And with him, he's got guard, tackle, flex. So you get your best five on the field. And there's still some unknown with Makai, you know, how he's coming back off this injury. So. You know, those are the two names I think when they're on the clock, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty good chance since it being one of those two guys. This draft class has gotten a little bit of, you know, slack for not having great QBs. What position do you think it has a lot of depth in that works perfectly for the Jets? I think there's two. I mean, at the deepest positions are edge rusher and receiver. And, you know, I know you're excited about what you have there. Elijah Moore is going to be a stud. I, I love his game. And, and Corey Davis is a solid player. But if you could add another difference maker in that bunch, I think you have an opportunity in this draft to do it. And the cool thing is with those two high second round picks, however it falls, I, I think you can come away with an edge rusher and receiver as two of those four picks. And I don't feel like you have to do it at four and 10. I think there's still gonna be options at 35 and 38. Joe Douglas has proven he's willing to be aggressive this off season, especially. How do you think that's gonna carry through into this draft? Well, I think, you know, you got to just sit and see what happens and see how it develops. I know, you know, you kind of view these certain players as difference makers and what that number is. Most teams think it's 10 to 12 guys. So if you can position yourself to get those guys and, and I've seen it, I've been in draft rooms where you have your 11th player that's available at 23 and you can say, OK, let's let's go get him. He's too good. How pivotal do you think it is that the Jets have four picks in the top 40 with such a young team? This is huge. I mean, this is the foundation of this football team. Last year was a great start with that group that came in and played really well with high volume players. And you've got a chance to back that up with this group. So, you know, five years from now, when we look back and, and, and see whether or not this is a perennial playoff team or not with the Jets. And if they've arrived as an organization, we're going to look back at these two drafts as the reason why, yes or no. Let's say the Jets keep all four of those picks. What do they look like at the end of the day? Oh my gosh. Well, I think you're going to get a chance to get difference makers, like we said. So if, if you go Sauce Gardner at four, Drake London at 10, and let's say in a miracle of all miracles, Brees Hall somehow got to 35, I'd run that card in. Um, and then you're looking at maybe it's a, it's another edge rusher you could double up if somehow Arnold Ebicady from, from Penn State would get there. So there's just four names, 0% chance it happens, but why not throw them out there? Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.